We're just hearing from the King. The King uh, has confirmed uh, David Cameron as a life uh, peer, which means that he can happily yes. now uh, become the Foreign Secretary. Yes. Didn't expect that when you woke up this morning, did you? <laughs> I did not. I have to say, when someone said, get your cameras on Downing Street, and then I saw the vision of, of David Cameron in, it was a, a drop my coffee moment. I was not expecting that, and I like to think I expect most things around here, uh, but that one was a genuine uh, surprise. But in a way, isn't that what Rishi Sunak needs to do? He needs to be bold. Uh, part of the criticism of the King's speech last week by former cabinet ministers was he's managing, not leading. Where's the inspiration? Where's the big policy idea? Where's the stuff that's going to get the attention? of the country. Well, this, I think, will certainly catch the headlines and the attention of the country. Uh, the Prime Minister bringing back a man uh, that was once Prime Minister to sit in his cabinet and help him go in into a general election. Of course, David Cameron was also the man that brought Brexit uh, to Europe and the European Union. So I don't know how the European Union uh, will feel, some of the leaders there, about this particular uh, Conservative leader. But again, uh, Rishi Sunak has really, if you think about one place where he has had a hit, it has been on the foreign stage. Uh, the Windsor Declaration, sorting out the tensions on the border uh, with Northern Ireland. Um, that an island uh, that was a real coup and he's built the relationship back uh, with joe biden he's led on ukraine as boris johnson did so this is a kind of a positive brief from i think we've got i think someone went in sorry i missed it um anyway so we've got just to recap suela braverman out David Cameron, the new Foreign Secretary. Bear with me a second, Beth, if you would. Foreign Secretary, new Home Secretary, and Jeremy Hunt is staying put as Chancellor. OK, they're just looking at UK Prime Minister, otherwise known as at number 10 Downing Street on Twitter, and they've got this picture of the Right Honourable David Cameron, appointed Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs. This is very much back to the future, Beth, isn't it? Didn't he say, didn't he say just at party conference, the Prime Minister, that now is a time for change? Yeah, he did say... Uh, look, I would say with uh, Rishi Sunak that the messaging has been confusing. He said he is uh, the candidate for change, but then stressed that the King's speech was continuity. He said he was making long-term decisions about the future and then made a load of short-term uh, election guises around HS2 and in, then in the King's Street to try and uh, bounce uh, Labour. So there is contradiction in what he's been saying. Uh, but you could argue that this is quite a radical departure if he brings a former prime minister in as his foreign secretary. No one, uh, no one expected that. In a way, he can argue now with some legitimacy um, that when he said he was going to change things up and do things differently, this is proof right there uh, that he's prepared to make decisive decisions that his party won't like. And many won't like it because they're all waiting for these sorts of jobs. They don't want to bring uh, someone in from the past to take a job that other cabinet ministers or senior uh, ministers uh, would want to take. But I think we're expecting David Cameron shortly. I've also got this from Pat McFadden, who's Labour's national campaign coordinator. He said a few weeks ago, Rishi Sunak and David Cameron were part of a failed status quo. Now he's bringing him back to life uh, on his life as a life raft. This puts to bed the Prime Minister's laughable claim to offer change from 13 years of Tory failure. Why are both parties talking about change? Because polling will tell you four out of five British voters want change at the next general election. They're just not quite sure if uh, Keir Starmer will be that change. So there's still some to play for for this Prime Minister.